Hello everybody, we're going to be at Matthew uh, 9, starting at 9 to uh, 13. Matthew the tax collector. As Jesus passed on from there, he saw a man named Matthew sitting at the, at the tax, tax office. And he said to him, follow me. So he arose and followed him. Now it happened as Jesus sat at the table in the house that, behold, many tax collectors and sinners came and sat down with him and his disciples. And all the Pharisees saw it, that they said to his disciples, Why does your teacher eat with tax collectors and sinners? When Jesus heard that, he said to them, Those who are well have no need of a, of a physician, but those who are sick. But go and learn what this means. I desire, desire mercy, not sacrifice. For I did not come to call the righteous, but the sinners into repentance. So Matthew obeyed Jesus' call to follow him. right? And Mark, 214 chapter 214 it says the same Matthew was also named Levi and his father was uh, Alphaeus I don't I think that's how you pronounce the name and Matthew 10 3 mentions another disciple who was the son of the same father Alphaeus so what they call James the less so there was also James the brother of John so there was two James that followed Christ right so he's saying what when we and what I was studying was that in Mark and Matthew are showing that there was two, uh, two other disciples that were brothers, right? Because they had the same father, and uh, Mark calls Matthew Levi, so his name is Levi, too, right? So they had two different names. He had two different names, right? So we have, uh, so Matthew is Levi in Mark, <clears throat> and his brother. He also had a brother called James the Less. It's his brother. Right. Matthew was a tax collector, for, tax collector for the Romans. Tax collectors were looked at as sinners, collaborators with the Roman Romans against their own people, traitors, extortioners. Right. Also, tax collector overtaxed, right, for to collect more profit for themselves. Jesus called him into a position, and the position was you used to take extra, you used to take a lot for yourself, but this position you're going to be giving yourself you're going to be giving right so he didn't he didn't just get called in he was taught to be transformed to something else right we are all therefore if anyone's in christ they're a new creation so now his whole life was taking from his own people now he's going to be giving to people right and that's what happens when the lord calls you you start following him you start changing your perspective in life your whole position in life changes right you once were a, a taker right i used to do a lot of crimes and, and, and sell heroin. I was just give me the money, right? Give me the money and people will steal and to buy the heroin. It's all about me. It's all about my wealth, right? And now I'm learning to deliver the word. Now I'm learning to uh, position myself to be a giver, right? To, to love on people, right? So to that tax collectors were all, they were called public, uh, publicans. They were called publicans because they dealt with the public in, the, in their money. They did their own business out in the public, right? So when you read, it says, as Jesus passed on from there, he saw a man named Matthew sitting at the tax office. So the tax office, when you go in, you knew the tax office. They were on public display. Everybody knew who the tax collectors were because they were on, not only did they deal with the public, they were out in the public. So they were called public publicans, right? Tax collectors were on full display out in the public, legally overcharging their own people getting rich off the poor. So since they were in the public, they that means everyone knew who they were in their whole families, right? So their families were hated by their own, right? This represents generations. This represents generational curse, right? I'm, let me tell you, I a lot of people looked at me like I I, I represent my father. My, my last name is Rodriguez, right? So I'm out there committing crimes and. Then, like, who's this dude's father, right? We don't, now society, we don't really look at that anymore. But back then, it, it meant something, right? What you did, you honored your father, your mother, by the what you did. People looked at you like if you had a good character, they, they, he must have good parents, right? But if you're a bad character, right, they're, they're looking at your parents, right? So what do they teach you, right? So so this represents, so he, not only was a tax collector, they, they looked at his parents, like, you're just as much as a twerk as him. You taught him this, right? So generational curses what do we what are we when we live our lives how what are we passing down right what are we passing down or what are we what are we uh uh, uh showing 
that we learn for our, our family values, right? Let me tell you, you could be, you could stop that right now, right? If you have, are you a part of a generational curse? Tax collectors had to be recorded record keepers. They had to be record keepers and know how much to use it, and they knew how to use a pen. Must make sense. Jesus would call him Matthew use his pen to keep accurate documents and writing the gospel and the testimony of our Lord Jesus Christ. Matthew left, left the tax collecting. Once you left it, it was very, very hard to go back to it. So he pretty much, follow me. Boom, he made a decision right there. Bam. And his whole life, there's no turning back. There's no turning back when you walk with the Lord. Right? There's no turning back. So it says, uh, tax collectors and sinners came and sat with with Jesus and Jesus used Matthew's influence to bring others to repentance so when they came to eat with the tax collectors and the sinners who brought the tax collectors and the sinners Matthew he knew all the tax collectors so he brought them right and it was not just a little house it was many uh, many tax collectors and sinners right it says that how did they how did the Pharisee know and see all this it had to be in a big big town hall meeting right and so that's how they seen it. They were all invited. They were all invited. It, was a, it had to be a public thing announcement. right? So Matthew's calling the tax collectors. And the Pharisees came. And Jesus right there leading people into repentance. Or talking to them about repentance. And we have an issue with the Christian faith. Where we tolerate a lot of sin in the church. But the, Jesus called people into repentance. He did. He tolerated them for a moment to at least tell them the truth. And that is... We need to change the way we think. So sin, repentance doesn't actually mean turning away from sin because we still sin. It's about changing the way one thinks. I used to be thinking this way in the world. Now I'm going to turn toward Christ and start thinking the way he thinks and seeing the way he sees and hearing the way he hears and loving the way he loves and walking in this world like the Lord Jesus Christ and, and, and showing his image in this world. And that's true repentance, right? Because we're, we're all sin and we all fall short, right? So if we all sin and fall short, what is repentance to sin? It's just that when you change and you change one's mind, you turn right toward Christ, you sin less. You don't, you're not sinless, you sin less. You're being transformed and you're growing, right? And now you don't want to do the old things and you're doing new things because you're a new creation in Christ. You're born again, right? So, he says, why did your, they, the Pharisees said, why do your teachers eat with tax collectors and sinners? Romans 8, 5, Romans 5, 8 and Hosea 6, 6, right? Hosea 6, 6, it says, Jesus tells them, that's what he tells them. But go and learn what this means. I desire mercy and not sacrifice. For I did not come to call the righteous, but the sinners into repentance. So I want to tell you that God called is sent his son into his world for mercy and grace. And not to condemn. Right? He told the woman caught in adultery. He said, neither do I condemn you. Sin no more. Right? So I want to tell you that he doesn't call the righteous. He calls the sinners into repentance. He's called. He's come for us. He's come to lay hands on us. He's come to speak to us. He's come to bring His Spirit to us. It's a gift from God. It's eternal life. It's forgiveness. It's grace and mercy, right? He wants. He says, "I extend mercy, right?" And it's better than sacrifice, right? Obedience. Obedience is better than sacrifice, right? So I wanted to tell you that the Lord has come and sent forth to transform our lives, to turn us a new direction, His direction, to follow Him. He's called you to follow Him. In the name of Jesus, I hope you receive this. I hope you learn from this. I hope it's changed your life. I heard, hope that you all followed and listened to what I said and look into it and read and get a big, uh, bigger picture of what Matthew is writing. He's writing about himself. He's confessing something to you. He's telling you that this was me. I was a traitor to my own people. But when Christ called, I, I followed. And I what you said, take, now I give. My whole life transformed. I was once a taker now i'm a giver right i give the word of god to you i give you the uh the truth of jesus christ the truth is that he's called you into repentance he loves you he wants to put his hand on your life in the name of jesus amen